These are some of the things that I learned building my very first iOS app in one week. Historically, I have always been a full stack web developer, but I recently started picking up iOS app development primarily because I'm actually building my very own iOS app. The app that I'm building is called a three minute journal and it's an audio journaling app that lets you journal about three things every single day. Something beautiful you experienced that day, something that you experienced that was annoying that day and something you're thankful for that day. The whole concept of the app is about audio journaling, recording journal entries using your voice. And you can then play back these journal recordings anytime you want in the future. And we also transcribe your journal recordings from audio into text. It's a faster way of journaling compared to handwriting or typing them out. And it's also a better way of journaling because when you journal using your voice, it almost feels like a mini therapy session. I built the initial version of this product within one week with zero iOS experience. And these are some of my thoughts as a full stack engineer learning iOS development for the first time. I also built my app completely in Swift. I did not use React Native, so most of my opinions will be about Swift. The very first thing that I realized about developing with Swift is the fact that it is a very Apple-like way of developing. And what do I mean by that? They language is super opinionated. Apple is very, very particular about how you do things. I will say though, I actually didn't mind how opinionated it was. I do believe it resulted in really easy to read code. And there are a lot of things within the Swift programming language that I wish would transport over into the JavaScript world as well. Number one being the guard statements and the if led statements. Love these so, so much. I will also say Xcode as an IDE kind of reminded me how good certain IDEs can be. Xcode was the very first IDE that I've used in a very long time because I've mostly just used VS Code which is mostly a text editor. It was actually pretty convenient having tons of information coming out from Xcode natively. The debug tool is super good. And there's also a lot of nifty little features as well, such as Swift UI previews that lets you create a UI component. And then natively within Swift, you can actually see the preview live. Something that annoyed me a little bit about writing iOS applications within Swift is the fact that there was no hot reloading. Whenever I would make a change within Xcode, if I really wanted to see how it would turn out, even if it's like a tiny UI change, I would have to rebuild the entire application application, which does take a few seconds. It's not terribly long, but it is definitely a slower development process compared to hot reloading using like React or something. One part of the iOS app development that I found pretty difficult was the fact that it did not use CSS for any styling purposes. I think I've always just used CSS as the default for any styling, like margin, padding, and stuff like that. The one nitpicky detail that actually still drives me kind of crazy to this day is how they do padding and spacing. So for padding in the CSS realm, it's pretty simple. You do padding top, padding bottom, padding left, padding right. But for some reason, the people at Apple think that a better way to say padding left and padding right is padding leading, padding trailing. Bruh. How is that more intuitive than left and right? I have to say the number one thing that I absolutely hate about iOS app development is the fact that you have to get app store approval for any type of new release that you want to make. The beauty of full stack web development is the fact that whenever you make any changes and you want to deploy them, you don't have to get permission from anybody to do so. You can just deploy it to the internet for anybody and everybody to use. If you have a critical bug fix you have to get out, you can do it immediately. With iOS applications, that is not the case though. You have to get app store approval from Apple every single time. Now, don't get me wrong, they have a pretty good system and most of the time they will approve it within 24 hours, but there have been certain instances where I had to wait like 36 hours, 48 hours for a bug fix to get out. One of the biggest learnings that I had with doing iOS app development is the fact that you want to extract as much logic as you possibly can into a backend if possible. Extract all of your strings into a backend service, like an AWS Lambda function, a Google Cloud function. I'm using Firebase, so I'm using a Firebase function. Extract as much business logic as you possibly can into the backend and then make your iOS application just a container to render whatever content is sent over from the backend. Trust me, this will save you from tons of headaches in the future.